I'm born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 35 years I lived there. And I'm the mother of four children. And what happened was in 1999, that's when I left Philadelphia and came south. I lived in Baltimore for 12 years and then my husband decided, okay, in um, 2011, let's come here to North Carolina. But what started with me, um, with my health, was when um, I lost my mother to breast cancer in 1988. And a few years later, in 1994, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was devastated, absolutely devastated. And I had an idea when I found the lump. Um, I found the lump actually in late February. And I was told over and over again, I was like, well, you're too young. You know, we understand that your mother had cancer, but you're entirely too young. This will not be cancer. It's a cis. African-American women are more cystic. And, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. And we're going to do an ultrasound. We don't need an MRI because you're too young. And that's all I heard was too young, you're too young. So I kind of, you know, <laughs> build on that confidence. Okay, I'm too young. This is not happening to me. And then when I went to the doctors on March the 4th, 1994, 1994, they had my stitches removed, I was told then that I had interductual carcinoma. And I was devastated. Um, it was, I just, it was over for me. It was over because I watched my mom die. I watched her suffer. And I said, well, then here it is. It's, I'm going to go through the same thing that she did. And then I had four children what's going to happen to, to them. It was hard. You know, you're young, 29 years old. I'm just in the prime of my life and have to go through this. You know, and I wasn't sick. I didn't feel any pain. So this is just like, wow, you just wake up into this nightmare. It was just God awful. It has been a struggle. Um, honestly, it's been a struggle with different things. With the chemotherapy that I had in 1994, it has a lasting effect um, with the regimen that I had. And just like I have ailments from the chemotherapy with um, the electrolyte imbalance, um, the sinus and stuff like that. Um, sometimes I have difficulties with my heart. Um, with what I guess what they call it cardiac episodes and they think it might have been from the adriamycin so it's just like every day it's just a reminder of what I had to go through in the door back in 1994 mm -hmm. and every day is a new day it's a new journey you know you feel better and you keep going and then now it's the lymphedema um, which the swelling on that side that was affected and having to deal with that and the measures you have to do to do to keep the swelling down, wearing the band and the glove every day. It's a constant reminder. You just you never forget. You know what made me change that mindset of whether I was gonna die was my faith. And I had to really get myself together. You know, and the reason why I say this is because when I watched my mom go through what she went through, and my mom was a good woman, good mother, took care of her children, you know, and I said that she didn't deserve to go through what she did. And it was at that time that I was praying with her, and I had asked God to, you know, I said, look, I'm young, you know, let me take on this disease and let her live, was my prayer. Because I sat there and I watched her suffer. Um, and so when my diagnosis came about, you know, after a few days of, you know, crying, I said, well, kind of like this is what you asked for. So, you know, and I just prayed, you know, and asked God to, to be with me, you know, because I really didn't want to die. You know, I wanted to see my children grow up. I wanted them to see them graduate and get married and all the things a mother wants to do with their children. So, you know, and I asked him, I said, well, if you get me through this, 
this time, then I'll be the vessel to help other people, other women understand that they can go through, you know, and get through this and live beyond cancer. But with that mindset, what I had to change was my outlook, my mindset, mm -hmm. and not be negative and look for the positive in everything. Mm -hmm. The positive in everybody. You know, every day was that chance to get it better. Every day was that chance that I felt better, you can do better. And more importantly, I mean, that was my relationship with God. So, I mean, we can't look at anything else but understand that that was my faith and my relationship. So, and that was what had gotten me through. But at the same time, you know, we're going through is that I wanted people to understand that cancer is just not a death sentence. It's not, you know, and I believe, in my opinion, that your mindset is what helps you through those treatments. Is that being around positive people, you're not being negative or you're just sick or, you know what I'm saying, just being positive because that being positive helps you feel so much better. You know, you have a better sense of who you are and what you want to do and what you want to obtain. You know, and I said, if I help that next person, just one person to understand you can do this. Yeah, you might hurt and it's okay to cry. That's one thing I learned. It's okay to cry and, you know, we wipe our tears or somebody will wipe the tears for us and we keep on moving. I thank God for allowing me to have gone through what I've gone through mm -hmm. because I believe my purpose here is to help other people. Um, additionally, physically, I'm okay, you know, for the most part. You know, I wear this band, it's my code of honor. It, it, it re keeps me humble. You know, it reminds me of the journey that I started when I lost to my mother, because this didn't start in 1994 for me. It started back in 1988 with my mother. So, you know, I remain true to that. You know, I'm working full time. I have a good job with the state of North Carolina. I am now in school full time, um, studying criminal justice. So it, life is, is good. You know, life is good. Um, overall, I try to do the best that I can do for my health. I don't always eat the right thing, God knows, but I try, you know, to exercise as much as I can. My husband and I, we enjoy swimming. We do that at least a couple times a week, you know, and um, so I could say life, life is good. And we do things together. Like we have an organization, Out of the Box Creations, and we're a special events company that plan special events and dedicate, dedicate those funds to fundraising for health-related charities. So we'll always be giving back, um, not just for cancer, but various cancers and, and illnesses that's out there. So I've, I've learned a lot from my past. My past defined who I am, you know, as Leah Scales. You know, you don't go out there and say, hey, you know, I had cancer. You know, I've been a quiet spirit for some years, but as I've matured and know what my purpose, truly define what my purpose is, I'm a little bit more approachable and I'm more willing to say, hey, you know, I can put that shyness aside and I can go to somebody who, I don't know who they are, but I can tell that they're losing their hair and then they're going through something and not to say that, you know, the Lord is with you. Stay encouraged. Everything happens for a reason. I don't know, my mother told me that before she had left here. Everything happens for a reason. It, we might not be able to divine that reason right away, but it may come later on. So there was a purpose, there was a reason for me to be diagnosed with this cancer. And it was a reason, it's a purpose for me to still be here today almost 20 years later. And it's a reason for everyone else.